I decided to add the Mopar tailgate reinforcement to my 2020 Wrangler Willys Eco Diesel. The kit comes with the aluminum reinforcing plate, all the hardware, and detailed install instructions including a tool list. The first step is removing the spare tire. There's a string included to hold the tire carrier out of the way while you're doing the work. Next step is to remove the tire carrier and in my case I had added a rough country spare tire relocation bracket that had to come off as well. Once the spare tire carrier is removed you can tie it out of the way with the string they provided. I relocated the spare so the spare would clear my trailer hitch. Now the Jeep is lifted in bigger tires so I don't need it anymore. Quite a bit of debris had accumulated behind the bracket. The bracket was a substantial piece of metal and weighed quite a bit. I didn't weigh the new tailgate reinforcement plate, but it's a lot lighter than that bracket was. I'm sure the Jeep will be 10 pounds lighter after removing that bracket, even with the addition of the tailgate reinforcement. I decided to add a webbing cam strap to hold up the spare tire carrier. I was worried that string might break. Now it's time to mark the tailgate with a couple of lines so you can see if it moves during the process of installing the new bracket. I also put some blue painters tape on the tailgate to help hold it in place. They provide cardboard shims in the kit to hold the tailgate up as well. I decided to make some out of wood. I didn't show myself doing it, but I had to use a rubber mallet to drive my Torx bit in because of all the paint that was on the tailgate bolts. My impact gun wouldn't break the bolts loose. So I had to break them loose with a ratchet. I guess it's mostly because of all the paint that's on them. If you like the video or find it interesting or useful, it would be great to have you as a subscriber to Muddy Ruts Overlanding. Comments and likes are definitely appreciated. I'm really pushing in hard towards the bolt while I'm trying to break these loose. The worst thing would be to have one of these strip. It's a relatively easy install of this part. There's no need to make it worse by stripping some bolts. Now it's time to use the impact gun and make it a little easier. I'm not too happy that my Willie's four-wheel drive sticker is going to be covered up, but I'm going to leave it on there. I didn't want to try peeling it off. And I'll think of something else and maybe put another Willie's four-wheel drive sticker somewhere else on the, on the vehicle. You put the bolts right through the reinforcing plate, and they give you some plastic retaining washers that hold them in there so they're not falling out while you're trying to install this part. I'm taking my time installing these four bolts, starting each one, and making sure nothing gets cross-threaded before I start driving them in farther. The Mopar parts can be a little more expensive. I like them because they're well engineered and they usually fit perfectly when you go to install them. These bolts should just be snugged up. They shouldn't be too tight. That way you can line up the bolts on the tire carrier. The top and bottom left side of the tire carrier gets spacers and they provide the plastic retaining washers to hold the bolts in while you're installing it. Same thing with the tire carrier. Get all the bolts lined up 
Make sure they're going in straight without cross threading and then just snug them up for now. Now it's time to check the pencil marks we made in the beginning to see if the tailgate still lined up where it started. Everything looks good as far as tailgate alignment goes. So now I'm going to torque down all the bolts to the specifications given in the manual that came with the part. Now that all the bolts are torqued, I can remove the wood shims and the blue painter's tape and try opening and closing the door to make sure everything's working just right and everything stayed lined up during the process of installing the reinforcement plate. I went from the stock 31 inch tires with the Mopar aluminum wheels to a Mopar Steely with a 33 inch tire. So it's not a huge amount of weight gain, but I'm still happy to have the tailgate reinforcement. You can definitely tell the tailgate's much stronger with the tailgate reinforcement installed. No worries using the tailgate table. I'm putting a little weight on that now that the reinforcing's installed on the tailgate. This tailgate table has come in really handy. It's one of my favorite mods on the Jeep. Uh, it's well made. This one is the Mopar one, but um, there's a lot of good ones out there. Some of them have the bamboo, uh, but definitely it's worth adding to a Jeep. I found out the original rubber bumper stabilizers were the correct length for the tire and wheel setup that I have. I didn't need to use the included longer ones. A small shot of silicone lubricant made the bumper stabilizers pop right in. Now it's time to pick up this heavy spare tire and throw it back on the tire carrier. Now this makes me glad I don't have 37s. This one's heavy enough. You can see in this picture that the tire is right up against the bumper. And it shouldn't be anything shaking around or vibrating while I'm driving now. Just a couple of small items to take care of. One is adding the hood back on the spare tire carrier for the backup camera. The other item left to do is to add the Jeep Performance Parts badge onto the tailgate reinforcement. The reinforcement bracket has some additional attachment points for accessories. I'm sure an antenna goes in one, but the other ones I have no idea what they're for. So I'd be interested in knowing. If anybody knows, leave a comment. Well, this Jeep, with all the mods I've done to it, including the tailgate reinforcement, is pretty well outfitted for overlanding. If you enjoyed the video, like I said, please like, subscribe, and make some comments. And I'll see you on my next video. And thanks again for watching.